We're very excited to uh, present this year's In Residence Entrepreneurs. But before we get there, I would like to just say a few words about Miller Center for Social Entrepreneurship. Um, as many of you know, Miller Center for Social Entrepreneurship launched its first accelerator in 2003, 20 years ago, which is incredible. Yeah, right? <laughs> And also, as some of you know, that's a full two and a half, three years before Y Combinator was launched. So, like, wow, mind-blowing. The founders of Miller, what is now Miller Center for Social Entrepreneurship were so prescient in terms of being ahead of their time, thinking about how to leverage the entrepreneurship and innovation of Silicon Valley to solve thorny global problems. And here we are today, 20 years later, continuing with that general mission, but then also now we've had our own milestones that we've surpassed in this recent year, and I just want to talk about a couple of them. We continue to focus on two themes, women's economic power and climate resilience, and in fact, in this last fiscal year, of the 90 entrepreneurs that we engaged with, 62% of them self-identified as women-led, which is a big milestone for us at Miller Center. Yeah. Woo. Um, another one I'd like to talk about is our top line KPI, which is around what is the increment in the number of lives improved within three years of graduating from one of the Miller Center programs. And we kind of accumulate that number, and we just surpassed 163 million lives improved within three years of uh, the entrepreneurs graduating from our programs. So this is like a major one. And then I'm just going to talk about one more big number because it news that just came out today. And I don't know if Manoj is here, but one of our alums, uh, Manoj Sinha of Husk Power Systems, just announced this morning on TechCrunch that they just closed a $102 million round. And they are the biggest and most profitable yeah, mini grid uh, company in India and now in Nigeria. So that's the kind of thing that can happen when you believe in a dream like these entrepreneurs do and um, in, you enjoy continued support from Miller Center, the amazing entrepreneurs, the mentors. I, I sort of see many of you here in the audience because <laughs> the lights are in our eyes. And I just want to thank everyone in the Miller Center ecosystem for being here, for supporting us, and for supporting the entrepreneurs. And with that, I'd like to ask Karen to say a few words about the entrepreneurs you're about to see. Well, thank you so much, Bridget. So I'm very excited to welcome this special cohort of SOCAP entrepreneurs who are also, as we all know, the Miller Center Fall in Residence cohort. So the enterprises invited here today represent some of the most promising leaders who are actively accelerating hope for a world without poverty. So this year, we've got 12 social enterprises whose collective impact spans across several countries, not just in Africa, including Kenya, Madagascar, Nigeria, and Uganda, across the Asia Pacific region in areas like Myanmar, Indonesia, India, and of course, in Latin America, with impact in El Salvador and Mexico. So this truly is a global cohort. So a key focus for us here at Miller Center is to really put our time, our energy, and our resources in supporting entrepreneur alumni from Miller Center, like these 12, who are successfully tackling some of our planet's most critical social and environmental issues. They represent sectors including sustainable agriculture, food security, maternal health, clean energy, ethical fashion, and the circular economy. So these enterprises are quite literally disrupting the structures that allow poverty to exist and the earth to be degraded. Collectively, they're raising more than $100 million in investments so that they can provide solutions and even new ecosystems that are decentralized, can scale at a pace that meets global demands, and shifts the power back into the hands of those most vulnerable. So for our guests here today who may not be as familiar with Miller Center's in-residence program, our entrepreneurs have literally traveled from all over the world to be here today with all of you so that they can participate in simulated investor meetings, facilitated sessions with our mentors, with their peers, and the broader Santa Clara University community, all with the goal to better prepare them to effectively tell their stories as leaders of change. 
I want to give a huge, huge thank you to SOCAP today for being such generous hosts. Shout out to Sarah Sterling, who's backstage. Yeah. So we are truly so, so honored and glad to have this opportunity to give our cohort this tremendous platform to showcase this work and to increase their social impact. We hope that you leave this event feeling inspired by these presentations you're about to see. And if you would like to learn more, please come to our Miller Center booth over in the Expo area, where we have QR codes that link directly to all of their pitches, and you can learn more information about them. So without further ado, it is my pleasure to introduce our first entrepreneur, Sarah Onchango of Boca Eats. Sarah? Yeah. All right. All right. My name is Sarah. I'm the CEO and one of the founders of Boca Eats Limited. I became a teenage mother. My son was constantly sick. I took him to the hospital. The doctor prescribed foods rich in protein as the first line of treatment. This is because our kids we are lacking foods rich in protein, and also our farmers had no skills in animal husbandry, which would enable them to raise poultry in order to get eggs, milk, and chicken meat, the cheap source of protein in the community. To solve this, I work with smallholder farmers in my rural community in Western Kenya, I make animal feeds for them. I supply animal feeds for these farmers so that they can be able to increase production of eggs, milk, and chicken meat. I also help farmers reduce post-harvest waste of bananas, where we process banana flour into banana chips. The byproduct from this processing, we make animal feeds. We provide market linkages for the extra products. These are eggs, milk, and chicken meat they produce so that they can be able to get enough income. We are raising funds. We are raising $450,000 in form of debt. And also we are raising, we are raising 250,000 in form of grant. This would enable us to reach 105,000 potential farmers in trainings, and also it will enable our farmers to produce enough protein to supply people in the community. And it will also help these farmers increase their profitability. I invite you in this journey. Together, we will make it happen in our rural communities in Western Kenya. Thank you. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Martina and I'm the co-founder of Gajigesa. Gajigesa is a three years old financial wellness platform for the working poor in Indonesia. Our name comes from local Indonesian language and means salary now. I wanted to take you for a while to Southeast Asia and introduce you to Ayu. Ayu is 30 year old weaver in garment factory in tier two city in Indonesia. She works full time but she earns them less than $300 per month. She is underbanked. She doesn't have a credit history, savings, she hasn't done her financial planning, and she doesn't get any benefits from her employer or state, such as employee loan or even health insurance. When Ayu's son fell ill, Ayu was forced to borrow from a loan shark stationed just outside the gate of the factory she works to be able to cover for unexpected expense. Since then, Ayu is trapped in a cycle of high interest borrowing. She is hounded by the loan shark at her workplace, at home, and worried about the safety and dignity of her household, she decides to leave her workplace so that she can't be found. But Ayu is not an exception. There are, there are around 134 million formally employed in Indonesia, out of which 80% are classified as working poor. 
And there are 450,000 bigger sized businesses which hire working poor workforce, struggling with their lower productivity at work and high attrition rates due to prolonged financial stress. But we do have a solution. Gajigesa is a financial wellness platform which in collaboration with employer enables employee to access their, their wages real time with a push of a button on a mobile device before the payday. But don't confuse it with a loan. These are the wages employee is already entitled to based on their productivity at work, such as finished day, hour or shift. These wages can be cashed out to the wallet or bank account of their choice, or it can be also used as a payment method for different products and services, such as bill payments, grocery vouchers. Employee can transfer money to the family and friend upon a small fee. They can also purchase, uh, they can also pay for the religious donation on the application. They can finally buy suited for them health micro insurance. They can use it also as a source of funds for the investments, such as gold. And last but not least, they can also engage in a financial education content through the application. We are proud to share that till date we have positively impacted lives of more than 27,000 employees in Indonesia and we saved them almost $40 million in predatory loan fees. How about Ayu? Ayu has been using Gajigesa for almost a year. She, she finally managed to stop borrowing from informal lenders and she even started saving for her child education. And she's the biggest cheerleader of Gajigesa at her workplace. We are raising additional $5 million in debt to be able to, uh, help, to, be able to positively impact lives of 100,000 employees in Indonesia. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Anthony Uwe from Nigeria. So I'm sure everyone in this room has had chicken in their meals in the last couple of days. But in Nigeria, where I'm from, we only produce 20% of our national demand. So that leaves a gap of 1.2 million metric tons of chicken meat, valued at over $4 billion. I've lived this problem as well myself. 10 years ago, I moved back to Nigeria to start a poultry business. But that is not enough. That is why we're building ePoultry. ePoultry is leveraging on technology, a software as a service platform that helps farmers to digitize their operations and financial records so they can qualify for input loans from banks and other financial institutions. The lack of access to data actually limits farmers to get funding they need to scale. On the other hand, we also provide a marketplace that ensures these farmers can actually sell profitably after the farm cycle. So they make more 25 to 30% income on their efforts in the food systems. We're looking to raise $600,000 to provide input financing to 500 farmers in the next 12 months, support 5,000 farmers across 11 cities in Nigeria, and interestingly, 72% of our farmers are women. If you're looking to do good with your money, you should join in poetry, and let's do this together. Thank you. Hello, everybody. My name is Rick Stamhuis, and I am making renewable energy accessible in the Madagascar. And to get to know all of you a little bit better, I would just like to ask maybe, uh, who has been to Madagascar? Can I see some hands? All right. Who would like to come to Madagascar? Oh my goodness. All right, that's gonna be a full plane to go back to uh, Madagascar after this conference. Okay, um, I would like to tell you today a little bit more about the work we're doing in Madagascar. Did you know that in Madagascar, there's the world's 5% of biodiversity. So I'm really impressed with all of you because even before me sharing that with you, you all already told me that you wanted to come over. So that's fantastic. So unfortunately though, this uh, biodiversity is under threat and so are the people in Madagascar. Because unfortunately, 
75% of the people in Madagascar have to live still on less than one dollar a day. This means that every single day they still have to use kerosene lanterns and candles to light up their houses. In addition, students do not have enough light to do homework and schools do not have electricity. That's why, as Girove, we're offering solar products that are rented out to these people for less than what they used to pay for a candle. We're delivering our novel model through a, uh, through a network of entrepreneurs. We call them franchisees. We equip them with all the materials they need to provide the clean energy service to the people in their uh, towns. And we also give a small percentage of uh, the revenue to the schools. This helps us to not only build up the community, but also change the course of a country by making also access to education accessible. Here today, I'm here in front of you to ask for your support because the problems that we're trying to tackle are bigger than we can just solve on our own. Up to date, we got up to 50,000 beneficiaries, but we would like to reach 500 schools and 150,000 people. That's why today I would like to ask for your support. We're raising 800,000 the, for the next year and another 900,000 the year after. We already raised 1.3 to get us started on the first 100 schools. And uh, it would be great to maybe start uh, to finish my session here to see um, what kind of support there is here for our, uh, for our mission in the, in the room. So if you are in support and uh, you would love to help us either financially or through partnerships, um, then I would like to, if you're not in support, then please stand up and uh, tell your neighbor why you would not be in support, okay? If you are in support, please sit down, relax, and I would love to talk to you after this. Hi everyone, good morning. My name is Natalie Casey. I am the Chief Business Officer at Coolbox. Our mission is to make sustainable cooling accessible to everyone who needs it. And I wanted to start first with a story about Mama Ibadon. Mama Ibadon is one of our first customers. She's a fish trader in Lagos, Nigeria. When we went to visit her a few months ago, to ask her how she was faring with her new cool box solar freezer. She said, I cannot tell you the number of times that I used to have to throw away fish at the end of the market day. This product, this freezer, has helped me save money and now I sell more. And why is it that this product, this fridge, would have such an impact on women like Mama Ibadon? The reality is that 600 million people in Sub-Saharan Africa live off of the grid, and an estimated 83% lack access to refrigeration. That leads to um, wastage of food and medicine, a dependence on diesel generators, and while solar refrigeration could be a solution, there are high upfront costs, and many times, small business owners like Mama Ibado don't have access to credit. Our solution is one that offers continuous refrigeration by storing energy in the form of ice. It eliminates the upfront costs and it displaces the use of diesel. And we do that with cool technology. Cool technology is a combination of solar refrigeration. It's also embedded with pay-as-you-go technology. And that enables us at Coolbox to offer innovative financing to our customers they can pay outright, they can pay on a lease to own basis, and even as cooling as a service. Of course, uh, in order for us to, to bring this impact and to scale across Sub-Saharan Africa, we are asking for your support to raise uh, our Series A of a total of $15 million, $5 million in equity, $10 million in debt, and that will enable us to have our, build our capacity and be able to bring our solar refrigeration products to more women like Mama Ibadon. 
And with that, I'd like, you to, I'd like to invite you to join us in making sustainable cooling accessible to everyone who needs it. Thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Sahar Jamal and I'm the founder and CEO of Maziwa. Our mission is to ignite the potential of mothers to balance their baby's health and their family's economic well-being. In 2018, I met a mother named Isabel who was dreading her return to work as a construction site worker because to her, it meant giving up on optimal breastfeeding. Now, unsurprisingly, her construction sites don't have a lactation room where she could use to express her milk. It doesn't have access to electricity, so she'd have to use either a slow manual breast pump or her bare hands to express milk. And even if she managed to do so, there was no refrigeration to store it. Now, after talking to hundreds of mothers just like Isabel, I learned that 90% of Kenyan women are choosing between staying at home to breastfeed their newborn or returning to work to support their families financially. Unfortunately, giving up on working means that the mother will lose several months of income in the short term and often drop out of the workforce completely in the long term. On the other hand, suboptimal breastfeeding means that her baby is actually 14 times more likely to die because of the inoptimal substitutes in these markets. And the mother has a higher risk of cancer and diabetes herself. Now, while we do a good job of educating mothers on the, the benefits of breastfeeding, we often don't give them enough practical support. So Maziwa has launched the Wema Breast Pump, which can be used underneath clothing and is discreet. It is wireless and portable and does not require electricity to be used. And it comes with a breast milk storage cooler. We also recruit and train a network of community breastfeeding ambassadors that provide tailored and culturally relevant lactation support, all while distributing maternity products like the Wema Pump and earning supplementary income. Now, to date, we've reached over 16,000 mothers and children and earned over 90,000 in US dollars in revenue. And we've built a powerful single product brand in Kenya, all with the help of half a million dollars in grants from groups like Grand Challenges Canada and the Acumen Fund. And we've been fortunate to be supported by great organizations like the Miller Center. Now our ask is $1.25 million in blended financing, and 50% of this is already in the works. With this funding, we'll be able to reach over half a million mothers and children and generate over 10 million in earned revenue by 2028, all while breaking even by 2026. This will allow us to build a multi-product distribution network across the continent, because as I'm sure you know, this is not just an issue that Kenya is facing, but actually occurs all over Africa and many areas in the world, including the US. So we'd like to build a strong global full-time team with partnerships across the continent with this support. And we hope you'll join us in this journey to ensure that no mother has to choose between the, her baby's health and her family's economic well-being. Thank you very much. Three billion people across the world are impacted by the negative impacts of household air pollution, and this results in a million deaths every single year. Good morning. My name is Charlotte Magai. I grew up in Mukuru. It's one of the biggest slums in Nairobi, and by 10, I was already a total orphan. At 16, I became a teenage mom, which meant I had to drop out of school to figure out a way to fend for myself and my young daughter. I got a job selling charcoal. It was also the only fuel I could afford. And so my daughter and I kept suffering from respiratory tract infections. And when she turned two, she suffered a severe burn injury caused by a traditional stove. This sparked my interest in providing a better cooking technology for my community. I wanted to rewrite the script of possibility for women and girls and make it safer for mothers to cook. I founded Mukuru Clean Stoves. It's the first social enterprise with a factory that uses recycled metal to manufacture improved cookstoves, and then we partner with local women business owners to distribute to the last mile. Since 2017, we have reached over 415,000 households in Kenya, impacting the lives of a little over 2 million people who now benefit from cleaner energy within their homes. But that's not all. 
We work with local women business owners who distribute every single unit we sell and earn a 10% commission. Our stoves have enabled families to avoid over 820,000 tons of carbon emissions and also earned our local women business owners almost half a million dollars in commissions. But that's not the, all we're doing. Last year, we won the Earthshot Prize, which came with a million pounds, and a question, what else could we do? Our stoves were enabling people to limit household air pollution, but it wasn't really taking it all away. And there was the problem of malaria. So then we decided we were going to develop the first in the world malaria fighting bracket, which is patent pending now in the US, to enable families to create a cloud that turns their home into a mosquito repellent zone when they are cooking. We came up with this idea because we read a report by the CDC that was stating that millions of people, even with access to mosquito nets, were still catching malaria around the time that they were cooking. And my daughter thought, are they cooking using your stoves, mom? So I figured I needed to change that for a lot of people. We have received funding from a couple of organizations to do research on this and produce this fuel and bring it out into the market. And we are now raising $5 million to get into the next 500,000 households, not just with our stoves, but also with the fuels that we are now manufacturing. Mukuru Clean Stoves over the last six years has been fighting household air pollution. With your help, we can reach the next 50 million households. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Florence Mogere. I am the founder and CEO of Nyota Limited. We are a social enterprise that partners with smallholder farmers in rural Kenya to manufacture highly nutritious vegetable products. Our, our smallholder farmers are outgrowers of fresh vegetables that feed into our lines of fresh frozen vegetables and canned speciality sauces. At the core of our existence is our commitment to increase small farmer earnings, reduce post-harvest food losses, and also improve nutrition amongst the communities that we work in. Our biggest beneficiaries are smallholder farmers, and one of these farmers is called An Kamau. For many years, An Kamau has practiced small-scale small farming in order to support her family of seven. Year after year, she, she was experiencing a 40% post-harvest food loss uh, due to the fact that she did not have a ready market for her products and due to poor post-harvest handling of fresh vegetables. Just like 7 million other people in rural areas, Anne Kamau was living in extreme poverty. Nyota Limited entered the market at the most opportune moment, given that there are over 15 million people in, in urban areas in Kenya, which form our core market base. And this is projected to keep growing at a rate of 4% per annum. There are over 2.65 US dollars, uh, over 2.65 billion US dollars in form of revenue that is expected to come out of the convenience food market in the year 2023. Additionally, there's been a lot of interest around healthy lifestyles, especially after the COVID-19. And this has, this has ensured that many other consumers are turning to our products as a source of nutrition. Our solution, therefore, is to, is to provide a ready market for smallholder farmers and also create a steady source of income. And this ensures that these smallholder farmers are able to increase their earnings by at least 30% just by partnering with us. Since the year 2020, which is the year that we went to the market, we have been able to partner with over three top retailers in Kenya, and we are able to supply 60 different locations within the Kenyan market. 
we have been able to attain a sales volume of over 200,000 units of our products, and we have 28 people that we have employed directly. Out of these 28, 27 are, are, are young women and mothers, and one is a gentleman that we love dearly. As, <laughs> as we continue to support many other smallholder farmers, just like Anne Kamau, I am happy and proud to say that our business is profitable. We are here today seeking an investment of one million US dollars that is going to allow us to scale both our production capacity and our sales so that we are able to meet a market demand that stands at four times our current capacity. With your support, we will be able to onboard an additional 3,000 farmers and be able to impact over 5 million people within a three-year period. Join us today as we transform rural communities in Kenya. Thank you so much for your time. Hello, everybody. I'm so grateful to be here. My name is Matt Wallace. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Oh Now. At Oh Now, we help young women, typically migrants in peri-urban and rural areas, to start and succeed in their own businesses. And we do it in partnership with business support organizations to help them run better to serve more women on the margins. In 2008, I moved to Myanmar, and for 13 years, I worked with micro and small enterprises, learning the ins and the outs of their challenges. But in 2021, my family and I had to suddenly flee the country because of Myanmar's political instability, a, mil a military coup. With the help of friends and family and mentors and resources, we were able to keep Onao afloat, to continue employing my team in Myanmar. I shouldn't be here today, but we made it. We made it through the valley of death. And we made it with help. And most of the business owners that we support don't have that help. They don't have those networks. They don't have those coaches and mentors. We're out to give every one of those business owners a coach to help them navigate the challenges that they face. These business owners face two major challenges. Number one, they have no margin of safety. When they face a challenge, it's threatening. It's life-threatening. If they have a challenge in the household, it threatens the business. If they have a challenge in the business, it threatens the household. They also have low to no growth prospects. If they see an opportunity, it's almost impossible to seize it. They don't have the resources to seize it, and they don't have the support to seize it. And these are individual challenges. Business support organizations have the local understanding and the local context to speak to the needs of business owners. But they also face challenges. They face resource constraints, and it's incredibly difficult to deliver support to every single individual entrepreneur. What usually happens is they deliver a training program, and it doesn't at all understand the specific needs of each business owner. So Onow developed a digital platform to extend access to women on the margins who want to launch their own businesses through business support organizations. We help business organizations scale up their individual services to women on the margins who own businesses. Most importantly, it reduces things like reporting time, less time on data entry by 86%. It decreases the time they spend rifling through papers and reading about information about an entrepreneur by 50% so that they can spend more time coaching that entrepreneur. We help business support organizations 10x the amount of time they actually spend coaching. Onow used the system ourselves and it helped us grow from serving 300 businesses to 10,000 businesses in 18 months with individual, real-time, one-on-one support. This is a software as a service subscription model. It's regular recurring revenue for our company, which makes us sustainable, and it's eminently scalable so that we can serve the needs of business owners all over the world. So we're raising a $650,000 investment to help us optimize this platform, to help us take it to scale, and this really important issue because business touches everything. 
If we can impact a woman's business, it increases her influence, it increases her agency, it helps her have money to pour into her family, into jobs in the neighborhood, in the community, so they can invest in education, in healthcare, and in nutrition. And this investment helps us expand what we're doing across all of Asia and into the world. Over the next five years, we're gonna reach 125,000 female entrepreneurs. Here's the thing, it's a big market. We already have two paying customers. We have four we're gonna sign in the next three months. We have 10 more behind those ready to, uh, to help us reach these number of women. So it's a great opportunity to have impact. We invite you to come along. Thanks very much. Hello, everyone. My name is Julio Alvarez. I'm the founder and CEO of Promesa. And I'm here to talk to you about the power of building a community. So if we really want to change climate crisis, it depends on all of us. We cannot depend on one corporation, one government, not even Elon Musk to come and help us save this. We really need to start because a problem that, that impacts all of us. And we all need to be part of the solution. So this is why we are facing these kind of big, amazing problems that we just turn our back on it, like waste. Something that each of us generate every single day. And each of us need to be part of the solution in order to solve it. We need to stop thinking about waste as a linear thing when we produce, consume, and dispose. Produce, consume, dispose. We need to start thinking about circular economy on how can we re re reintroduce all these materials into the line again so that there's actually no waste. That's the way nature is, and that's the way it's supposed to be. This is why we're building a community. On one hand, we have this community made of schools, corporations, households, everybody that is part of the consumer world, and we teach them how to actually be implementing programs to recover this material. So it's about training. It's about being educated about what happened with everything that we consume every single day. And on the other hand, it's the brands, the producers, where we teach them also how to recover these materials and reintroduce them into their system so that they don't have to take more natural resources. This way we can actually produce something that is amazing. And on the backbone are the students. We've, we found out that in schools, we have the power to really create this change because the students can actually be the ones that are teaching now their parents how to be more responsible with the, with the earth that they want to live on. And with the students, we've found that they can really start engaging the whole community. So this went beyond schools, now to corporations, to households, to restaurants, and everybody right now is actually doing something about it instead of just sitting quiet and wait for somebody else to do it. We've already begun doing this, and we have already 740 schools in our program with 300,000 active students daily engaging into solving this problem. And by doing this, we've already recovered more than 9 million pounds of waste and returned it into a circular economy. So if we manage to get really the consumers and the producers on it, we can really solve this problem. We are already ready to scale. Uh, we've all worked all over Mexico now, and we're looking for a Series A round to go to over 10 million students. Because imagine what we can do, this is with 300,000 students, now with 10 million students, we can really start changing the world. Let's start now with, with, with circular economy and let's see what else comes afterwards. Thank you very much. Can crisis lead us to finding new opportunities? In my experience, it has, and not only once, but multiple times. My name is Ariela Suster. I'm the founder and CEO of Sequence Collection, my company of handcrafted jewelry and accessories that I started as a personal mission and turned it into a sustainable business. I wanted to figure out a way to disrupt the cycle of violence for at-risk youth in El Salvador a country of six million people that for the past 40 years has experienced a civil war and gang-related violence. Let me share with you why I started Sequence. I grew up in El Salvador during the Civil War, 
and my family experienced violence firsthand, from shootings in our home, to car bombs, to my brother being kidnapped. I left El Salvador to go to college. I attended Skidmore and then worked in fashion for many years in magazines like Install Magazine. But I always knew that that wasn't my true calling. So I went back to El Salvador to address an issue of violence that had once affected my family. Currently in El Salvador, the biggest driver to gang recruitment, illegal drug trafficking and migration is unemployment. 25% of youth in El Salvador are currently unemployed. And when this cycle isn't broken, these young men end up in jail. Now, two out of every 100 Salvadorians is now in jail. So I wanted to break this cycle and create a solution. So I started Sequence, my company of handcrafted jewelry and accessories that employs young men and women who live in violent and at-risk communities to handcraft these beautiful products. We sell these products through retail, wholesale, online, and through corporate partnerships and fashion collaborations. So what has been our impact to date? Sequence has employed over 75 artisans and influenced the lives of 300 individuals in the communities that we work in. We have had deep impact in the lives of the young men and women who have come to work at Sequence. But now we want to scale that impact across more communities in El Salvador and around the world. So please come talk to us. We're at the Marketplace, uh, SOCAP Marketplace, to learn more about the Sequence Artisan Incubator, for which we are raising $300,000, to continue to expand our impact and generate 10 times more employment than Sequence is generating. Come talk to us also if you're a corporate company or a fashion company. I don't know if there's any here. <laughs> um, so we can produce your corporate gifting products. Thank you so much. Good morning. I am Madrin Miner, the East Africa Director at Systema Bio. Our mission at Systema Bio is to create value from waste. I grew up on a small farm in central Kenya. We had a few cows, I think there were three. My parents did a little bit of farming. And up to some point, our cooking was done on an open fire using firewood and sometimes charcoal. That's the situation with 400 million smallholder farmers across the world. They face numerous challenges like prolonged droughts due to the impact of climate change. They face food security issues because of lack of access to fertilizer. And cooking over an open fire is a challenge because it can cause complications with health. At Systema Bio, we work with these smallholder farmers and provide them with world-class biodigester technology. Using the organic waste on their farms, like the waste from cows, they are able to generate their own biogas for clean cooking and a very powerful organic biofertilizer for their farming needs. We are a global social enterprise founded in 2010 and currently operating in four global regional hubs. Here to date, we have installed over 83,000 biodigesters globally in 34 different countries. The impact of owning a biodigester has very strong links to several SDGs, like zero hunger, good health, affordable and clean energy, and climate action as well. This is the typical setup in any of the many farms across the world 
where we've installed one of our biodigesters. Through waste management, a smallholder farmer is able to generate their own biogas for cooking on their homes and biofertilizer for farming and other productive needs for the large-scale farmers. We've worked with several partners to reach these smallholder farmers globally, and our ask is $60 million in carbon financing to expand our operations globally, and especially in Africa, where we have identified eight new countries that we want to go to in 2024, and eight million of these will be in equity and working capital. Thank you.